I started manifesting from negative bank account balances. When I started manifestation, babe, I had a negative. I was the queen of negative bank account balances. Okay. How did I get here? Let me tell you, wasn't in investing a hundred grand from a negative bank account balance. It was in me being like, huh, what is in proportion to this? Do you have any tips on how to get better in embodying the new thoughts? The first thing that comes to my mind when you ask that is get better at embodying new actions. Because we can sit in our rooms and work on our thoughts all day long and beliefs and this stuff, but it's in the actions that you take that your brain chemistry actually changes. It's in the acting upon that your subconscious actually shifts. And so instead of being like, I just need to tell myself a thousand times that I'm wealthy, just start acting like a wealthy person and do it in steps. Of course, it's like, would a wealthy person avoid checking their bank account? Probably not. Maybe I can do that. And it's even in spite of having anxiety or fears come up, which of course there's practices like deep belly breathing. There's Uh, visualizations you can do. There's all kinds of stuff that you could do, of course, to help with the mental part, but it's ultimately in ripping the bandaid off and just logging into your bank account that you're going to start the process of embodiment. And through taking the actions, the thoughts are going to change. And guess what? They're going to change automatically. (laughs) So going back to automatic, this is how we can use automatic in our favor, right? But I feel like there's a fine line there I experience. Like a wealthy person wouldn't think twice about X investments. So do I take the chance even though I'm tight with my finances? So yes, a wealthy person wouldn't think twice about X investment, but take it into proportions, okay? Let's say the wealthiest version of you wouldn't think twice about a million dollar investment. Am I saying just take the fucking million dollar investment? Of course not, because you don't want to put yourself in a lower vibration. Andrea always says, It's the feminine that leads and it's the masculine that supports. And the same thing with intuition. Intuition leads and logic supports, okay? Your intuition is leading you on the path of a wealthier lifestyle, of a wealthier life, but you need to support things with logic too, okay? So if you just do that, that's completely illogical. There's an imbalance of intuition versus logic. There's an imbalance of feminine versus masculine energy, right? So you want to bring it back into balance. So let's go in proportion. What is in proportion to you right now? What is something that based on your finances, a person who has these kind of finances shouldn't think twice about XYZ investment, but still does out of an old pattern. So let's say for you, it's a hundred dollar investment. Let's say it's a hundred dollar course or for you, it's a $2,000 course, whatever. And you still don't take action with that, even though you do have the money. But it's that fear of like, what if the money doesn't last and blah, 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 and all this stuff. It's like in proportion, don't think twice about that investment. And as you do, guess what? The universe rewards. The universe will bring more. And then you're able to grow and grow and grow into a wealthier person to where you are able to make million dollar investments. Like you can just drop a million bucks on a new property that you want to convert into an Airbnb or retreat, whatever the fuck, okay? but you're no longer afraid. You don't feel hesitation because you have the money. Why do we, why do you have the money? Because you manifested the money. How did you manifest the money? Because you started manifesting when you had far less. I started manifesting from negative bank account balances. When I started manifestation, babe, I had a negative. I was the queen of negative bank account balances. Okay. How did I get here? Let me tell you, wasn't in investing a hundred grand from a negative bank account balance. It was in me being like, huh, what is in proportion to this? Could I buy, like, for example, at that time, I was very much into fitness. Still am just differently. It's not part of my business, obviously. I really encouraged myself. I pushed myself outside my comfort zone to shop at Whole Foods for certain ingredients. So for me, that was a big step. For me, that was me being the wealthiest version of myself was buying this particular like healthy ice cream that I wanted that was only available at Whole Foods or Sprouts or one of those stores. Then I would buy like certain uh, produce that were organic was important for me based off of the 
dirty dozen and the clean 15 list that I would buy those certain produce organic. And then the rest, I could go to like Ralph's or something or Vaughn's or whatever. But it was important that I would take those steps because in taking those steps, I was showing the universe that I there's plenty more where that came from. And I would say that I adopted that from Marie Forleo. There's more where that came from. And another example, something I did was I didn't have very much money, but my wallet always had like quarters and change and stuff. And so I did my best to give it away. How did I do that? Because I was like, you know, the the wealthy version of myself gives away all kinds of money because she's very interested in all these causes and just helping people and this and that. So I was like, let me just like go and bless people and pay for their parking meters. I would walk by parking meters, especially outside my job at the time or um, outside the grocery store or wherever I would go. And I would just drop change into people's parking meters and just fill them up or just like fill up one, you know, like that has, even if it has plenty of time in it, I was just like, you know what? The next car is going to have free parking today. Let me tell you how much, first of all, first of all, my, this was never my intention. But the law of cause and effect, the law of karma is very real. I can't tell you how many times I have not gotten parking tickets because of that fucking karma. There are so many times where I unintentionally ran out of time on my meter, never fucking got a ticket. Like knock on wood to this day, still haven't gotten a parking ticket since that time. No, maybe that's a lie. Maybe I had like one or two, but proportionally, proportionally speaking, very fucking few. I can't tell you how many times I've pulled into a uh, parking spot where the meter was actually already full. Hmm, That's interesting. Another thing I would do is um, back in Gig Harbor, I would go to Target and part of my 10, 10, 10 rule, which you can read all about in my book. um, People ask me, do I still practice it? I still practice the principles. The percentages are different because it just wouldn't make sense financially for me and how I want to create my money right now and how I want it to grow so that I can go even bigger with how I handle my money, the percentages have changed, but I still donate. Like I support an organization a couple of weeks ago around, um, a child loss, like families who are grieving child loss and, um, needing support around that found a random GoFundMe on TikTok, dropped the grand in that, like, I'm still doing those things. I'm, you know, tithing with my shaman, giving offerings every now and then for the spiritual work that I'm receiving in return and all this stuff. Like there's still elements of that. And so in the 10, 10, 10 rule, I I don't want to say the word force. I encourage myself to go to target and 10% of my beach body checks. I would, you know, withdraw from the bank in 10 and $20 increments, or maybe it was like, maybe sometimes it's like a hundred bucks. One, like I'll do a hundred bucks one time or I would get like five twenties or something like that. And I would go to target and I'd put a post-it note and I encourage everyone to do this. I saw a couple of people doing this. Like if we can make this a trend, this will be awesome. Like, let's blow this up. Let's make this the next TikTok trend, please. Um, I would put on a sticky note. I would say money is an infinite resource and it is always flowing your way. Please trust that or something like that some sort of encouragement around how money is just a frequency you tap into. Money is just energy. The world wants to bless you. You are meant to have a great day. You are meant to be wealthy, things like that. I put it on a post-it note, put on this uh, money, and I would hide it in random places. So I would hide it in like a book that someone would have to pick up and open it. I've hid it actually in a book on a plane. Like, you know how you can, the, the pocket, like I just left a book and money in the pocket for someone else to find. Like I got off the plane, but left the book with the money. So I've done that. I'll put it underneath a pillow, like in the pillow section or the home decor section, put in a candle. So it's just like random places that people would find it. And let me tell you, as time went on, I was able to give away more and more and more amounts of money and it always flowed back to me. So this is what I mean by proportionally speaking. Of course, I'm in a place now where I can do so much more or have so much more, invest so much more, but I started out from a negative bank balance and you can too, anyone can, okay? 